The Goat House is back with my biggest winners and losers of week three so far, highlighting the select few teams that really stood out in a great way and in a bad way. Another weird week. Let's break down my winners and losers. The Minnesota Vikings find themselves in the biggest winner column once again, and this being their best week of the three after a dominant win, 34-7 over the Houston Texans against a good team here. Who would have expected that while missing some key players? I mean, the Vikings look like one of the best teams in football right now. Through three weeks, you know, are they actually the best? Are they going to be the best long-term? Not saying that, but I think we all could agree at this early point of the season, they look like one of the very best, if not the best. So it's pretty damn impressive what they're able to do. Brian Flores feels like they're very lucky to have him in his situation where he may not be becoming a head coach. One of the best coordinators of football right now. That defense is causing all kinds of problems. We hear Brock Purdy talking about it. And then what he did to C.J. Stroud, a great young quarterback today. And the, the defense in general looks elite. The playmaking ability from start to finish. Locked down in the red zone when the team finally does start moving the ball. You got playmakers anywhere. Jonathan grenard has been getting pressure, but it hasn't been telling up the sacks. But in this game, three sacks happens to be against his team, the, his former team, the Houston Texans. So a little Grenard versus the Neil Hunter. I, I do think Hunter's better overall, but Grenard won this battle against you know the pass rushers against their former team. But more defensive player. I mean, uh, there's a load of defense, but Andrew Van Ginkle looks like their best defensive player. Maybe Blake Cashman as well. So really good additions there, but it kind of just goes back to coaching and that scheme that is creating for these players. Bynum making a play. Aaron Jones played well. Darnold, very impressive. Four touchdown passes, leads the NFL. Very efficient. Pressure is not phasing him, which is crazy because how he started his NFL career. And you got to give a shout out to Kevin O'Connell. I mean, the coaching staff of Minnesota Vikings in general, they are there to help players and get the most out of them. And it's very, very evident, very, very obvious. So a monstrous win for the Minnesota Vikings. And they keep proving every single person wrong. And it's it's looking legit. Sometimes the first two and sometimes the first three, maybe even four weeks, so cross our fingers here, but they're kind of showing that maybe the first two weeks weren't really a fluke because they go out there and do this to the Houston Texans. Uh, so a massive, massive winner, I would imagine, for everyone, the Minnesota Vikings. The Carolina Panthers make the biggest winners in week three. Who would have saw that coming? And again, we'll talk our next video Monday night. We'll talk about every single team's performance, putting grades on them in the tiers. So this video, really want to highlight the select few. I want it to be tough to make this video. Otherwise, it defeats the purpose. But the Panthers, a lot of things stand out here. Dave Canales, I love that hire at the time. I love what he did in Tampa. Didn't look too good the first two weeks. But is it Bryce Young? Is, is it still Are they still learning? But it looks like, you can't say for sure, it looks like his scheme works. You almost can say for sure because the play calls, I mean, it works. You can move the ball. It's, it's much better than it's been in the past. It just can the players do it. And they switch quarterbacks. And it works. I mean, obviously, they weren't believing in Bryce Young. I mean, for them to bench him right away, Canales is like, okay, this guy can't run my offense right. At least right now, he can't. I'm going to put a guy in that can. So there was really no hesitation there two weeks in. So it looks like his scheme worked. It's a really good sign in terms of that hiring. I, I think it was a really good hire. They can lose the rest of their games. I still believe in Canales. I think it would be determined next year then, getting a little ahead of ourselves. And not just the scheme and the coaching working, the weapons work. There are weapons there. Adam Thielen, I know he went, he got injured on that amazing touchdown catch, but right off the gate, making plays, that touchdown making plays. Uh, Deontay Johnson was their best receiver today. He's a good football player. We knew that coming in when they traded for him. He showed it today. Uh, multiple guys making plays, more than just that. And then Hubbard, too. I mean, Hubbard was probably their best offense player, looking at what he did on the ground right from the get-go, uh, but through the air, and which was right through the get-go, uh, racking up t uh, all-purpose yards. And Andy Dalton was awesome. Uh, I mean, awesome. The, the accuracy, the knowledge how smooth and clean everything was. It's a guy that people kind of gave up on and he gets thrown into a losing situation. 0-2, a lot of, lot of distracting, a lot of distraction. Talking about, oh, Bryce Young bench and can Dalton do it at his age at this point uh, with a bad team. You know, people are not thrilled with the play calling, the offensive line, the weapons even. And he comes in there and does it way, way better than expected. I mean, he balled out no... No hesitation. You wouldn't you wouldn't think he was rusty or anything like that. It was unreal. And he made Bryce Young look even worse than how Bryce Young even made himself look so far, if that made any sense. So because he just made it look so easy. 
It, it's just it's just showing the scheme. The, that's my main takeaway. The system, the scheme, the coaching. It could work. They can make some noise here. Now, was it just a week three things? Early early season thing against the Raiders that aren't the best team. They did beat the Ravens last week. Is it you know did they catch the Raiders on a weird week where the Ravens didn't really or the excuse me the Raiders didn't have much of a game plan for the Panthers because they switched quarterbacks. So let's wait and see going forward. But I, I love the looks here from the Carolina Panthers. It's good to see them. Uh, kind of in the opposite this week of where they where they have been. So re- really good to see. And how about the Green Bay Packers going 2-0, and 2-0 without their star quarterback, Jordan Love, who you'd imagine would be back next week for the Vikings in a big game. But for them to be able to do that, I mean, it's so impressive. It, it shows that they have a roster. You know, they, they definitely have a roster from top to bottom. It shows that they, and I'll say elite, it may be a little bold to some people, but I've been really big on Matt LaFleur. And I love the hire of Halfley. I thought that was a really, he's been a really good coach and he's been, you know, in the, with the Niners in the NFL and then has that college back. I love having both. I love having that resume. So I don't, I don't want to call Halfley elite right now. That'd be insane. But I, LaFleur is such a good game planner. He's even better when it comes to the big must win games, the playoff games down the stretch or, you know, into the playoffs in the postseason. So it's showing right now. Why I was pretty high on the Packers, why I picked them in the Super Bowl. Top to bottom, really good roster, great coaching, great game plan, and they put their players in the best position to to succeed, to win. And it shows, and they dominated the Titans. Titans were, they're 0-2, but they felt like a dangerous 0-2 team. And 0-2 teams are historically good in Week 3, and we saw that from some other teams uh, in Week 3 this year. But historically, on the Titans had statistically the best defensive football, so they are out, they are able to move the ball keep drives going, and play very, very solid defense. Malik Willis gets his revenge game. It feels like they got a legit backup, you know, in case Love goes down. If that's what it feels like because they just got him a few weeks ago. You know, don't forget that. Uh, the defensive playmaker showing up, multiple playmakers. Xavier McKinney since week one, that was a big-time signing. He's been a playmaker. Jaya Alexander, who was a big-time playmaker in his college career even, I mean, people kind of think because of the little injuries popping up in the past, did he take a little bit of a step down? You know, being able to be instinctive, bait the quarterback, read the quarterback, jump the route, make a big time play. So, uh, Packers got a good team. They got a really good coaching staff. Love's about to come back. I'd imagine next week for a huge game in Minnesota. Um, no matter what happens in that game, I'm very confident with the Packers as long as they stay healthy down the stretch. Uh, NFC North looks legit at the top three teams right now. So. Packers, extremely, extremely impressive, not just to win, not just to get two wins without your quarterback, but to actually be dominant, be complete, and show what they are capable of, and they're already getting going. It's a team that's both young team that's kind of just being put together kind of last year, and we saw that progression. They weren't even good at the beginning of last year. They're supposed to be a team that's going to get going later in the year, and they're getting going while their quarterbacks hurt. I think it's a really good sign here. Uh, so it really, it's another team I'm really excited about. And some more winners that really caught my eye, really stood out, really impressed. It kind of defeats the purpose if I talk about every single team. There's some other winners out there, of course. The next video, Monday Night Video, again, I will talk about every single team, grade them, tier them. But the Broncos, how about that upset win? Yeah, 0-2 teams, historically good in, in Week 3. The Broncos caught uh, you know that that fire there this year, and it was some other teams. Uh, so upsetting the Bucks. And they kind of caught the Bucks being kind of worn down, really, really depleted with injuries, but they were not supposed to do that. And it's really just positive energy because Bo Nix has really been struggling. The offense has really been struggling, and Bo Nix really stepped up. So is he progressing? Is he heading in the right direction? Really good to see. Did really good with his legs as well. Defense making plays as well. I mean, they played even though they were injured, they played a really good Bucks team, and they dom- they dominate them. You can see it right away, the energy, just the difference. The Rams, big time upset. I still don't know how the Niners let that game slip away. You know, even though it was kind of staying close, felt like they had that. Rams completely depleted. Bunch of teams are injured. Nobody's more injured than the Rams. Matt Stafford, Kyron Williams, these guys being able to find ways with no receivers, basically. I mean, some guys stepping up, making plays. Offensive line beat up, and that's going to get healthier. There's, you know, the offensive line, some of those guys are going to come back. Uh, you know, Jackson going to come back from suspension, and then the receivers are as well going to come back at some point. Darius Williams corner is going to come back at some point. So kind of just staying alive right now. Um, you know, so I don't, they just pulling it off when things aren't going their way. Huge. The giants, I talked about on Twitter a little bit, the giants looking at week one week. And it turns out they played a juggernaut apparently in the Vikings in week one, just week one, sloppy things week two, 
played a lot better. They did enough to out. They did. They outplayed the Commanders. I thought there was some still some sloppy, some things they got to clean up. But if Gano didn't get injured, I'm pretty confident they won that game. They step up though. Week three against the Browns, they step up again. Both sides of the ball. The defensive line is coming alive. Brian Burns coming alive. You know, more guys joining. Dexter Lawrence just making plays, making clutch fourth down stops. Uh, Daniel Jones getting better each week. It feels like Malik Neighbors taking over the NFL already. A guy's going to be an elite player sometime soon. Singletary minus once again an early second half fumble two weeks in a row. Um, you know, maybe they won last week if they, he, that doesn't happen. But he, looking really good, explosive. They're getting better. Offensive line, everything's get every single thing is getting better. It feels like they're a th- they're they're not the best team on the planet, but they aren't going to be a free win like you might have thought going into the year or after Week One. Uh, they'll play the Cowboys on Thursday night. The Jets that looked a little bit more like the Jets we thought w- w- was going to show up this year. They didn't look like it in the first two weeks, even though they won one of those games against the Patriots. They dominated that game both th- both sides of the ball. Rodgers looked good. Offense, you know, clicking a little you know more and more. So the Jets are coming. They're they're starting to click into gear. So that's good to see. Again, there was more solid winners. These are the ones that really, really stood out. They were kind of unique in a way. Uh, the top three really, really stood out. So these three were by far the biggest losers of week three. We do have some more losers. Though, but the Tennessee Titans going to 0-3. They're playing against their former quarterback who clearly did not work out in Tennessee. Has barely been in Green Bay. Going to go against them and... and just brutal. I mean, even the defense. The defense statistically was number one in football right from the get-go. Uh, they were struggling. They do try to make a push, you know, in a comeback. But offensively, you know, DeAndre Hopkins making some plays. But Will Levis continues to struggle. Does not acknowledge defense or read defense at all. He had flashes last year. Now I'm really worrying. Like, now it's like quarterbacks don't have big leashes anymore, too. So i really worried about that. They look like one of the worst teams in football. It's a game they should win, given the circumstances. And the Chicago Bears, who beat Tennessee in week one, maybe they're a little fortunate to win that game. You know, they're very close to being winless and maybe being talked about as the worst team in football. Uh, Embarrassing against the Colts. You know, it's a good matchup for them. It's a good matchup because the Colts are without their best defensive player. They can't stop the run. Opens things up for the Bears. And they already have a weak secondary. Opens things up finally for the Bears' offense. And the Bears play great defense, and they got a struggling quarterback, Anthony Richardson, over there, who still had some struggles in this game. Bears just can't execute. Williams did get some yards going through the air, but still picking up some bad habits, some bad turnovers. It's just, and there's some bad play calling, bad blocking. But I mean, there's times where it's really on Williams, not just the play calling of the offensive lineman as well. It's a collection of everything. Looking like one of the worst offenses in football. And now teams are trying to figure out how to move the ball on the defense a little bit, but it's probably because they're out there so much because the offense going three and out. So matchup says they should win that game over and over again. They do not. So, and it really wasn't that it was close for a little bit, but they, they definitely got outplayed there. They definitely got outplayed. And even with turnovers, they were able to get on Richardson. And then the Raiders, I mean, just getting completely dominated. Just completely dominated against the Panthers. I mean, I guess, you know, a little tough, I suppose, because they just switched quarterbacks. You don't have much of a game plan for them. But the biggest issue, there there is a red flag with the Raiders right now. Like, they did beat the Ravens last week, so they could find ways to win, but... The red flag is they are very much relying on the defense coming out and being elite, which I guess they could be. They're not elite, but they could be at times because they have Max Crosby, Christian Wilkins, guys like that, good defensive coach Patrick Grant, but um, in a defensive mind, Antonio Pierce. They're relying on that big time, and they're also relying on Minshew being super good, like the best possible Minshew, like the end of the Ravens game, very efficient, uh, because there is no running game. There is no running game, and, and that's a huge issue right now because they're, that makes them kind of one dimensional, but, and then sometimes they can't even be that passing team. Like we saw, like saw in this game, Minshew really struggled in, in this game, you know, really off target, stepping in the pressure and defense defensively. They're a mess. It did not seem like the normal Raiders defense, you know, bad tackling attempts, bad tackle angles. I'm guys getting yards after the catch yards after the contact, just running by guys. It did not look right. It didn't seem like the Raiders defense. It's kind of look like it kind of looked like the what the Raiders defense looks like on paper. You look at that defense on paper, it's not the greatest, but they have Matt Crosby, Christian Wilkins, some other ball players, and it really elevates good coaching. It really elevates uh, you know, the defense. And Antonio Pierce kind of saying, yeah, they got guys that kind of give up. It's 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 messy right now. It's not good. So um they did they do they're all holding on to that Ravens win, so it kind of gives you some hope, but man. They're relying on specific things happening. The defense has to play their best ball, and they're relying on certain guys to play out of their minds, even when they play out of their minds. You know, like sometimes you can't do it. And they're relying on Minshew 
playing the best he possibly could play, play every week. That's what it feels like right now. So that kind of raises concerns for the rest of the year for me. Uh, and that's kind of what these teams have in common. You kind of worry about these teams because the, these these losses, but other moments this season so far, you worry about them for the rest of the season. And some more losers, teams that kind of caught my eye in a bad way. I don't know how the Niners lose that game. I know they're beat up. That's why I kind of put them in the more losers out of the biggest losers because they, they were really beat up. The Rams were beat up more, but you, they can't be their full best like that. So you kind of give them a little bit of pass, but not really because they should not lose this game given how the Rams are depleted and how they had to lead the whole game. Felt like they were going to, beat their ass at times the, the Niners are going to you know whoop up on the Rams and they just couldn't do it um you know just just opportunities to put this game away and, the, and they couldn't do it I didn't like how the defense was being called I you know and again you do kind of give him a pass because guys you know Debo's not out there but Jennings is playing well but you know what I was getting to Ronnie Bell just you know having some crucial drops so He's probably not out there if they're healthy, but it's still just just little thing. And Purdy played well. I thought Purdy played well. Jennings was awesome. I just don't know how they can't. It's a choke. I don't know how they can't close this game out. And they're one and two. They're one and two right now. That doesn't look great. Browns looked decent last week against a decent against the Jags this week. You know they get spotted seven points. You know with the with the fumble on the punt on the kick return right out the gate. Awesome play. Watson to Cooper for a touchdown. Cooper ends up scoring another touchdown. But spot at seven points, and they can't find a way to win this game. They get completely outplayed by the Giants, and they had plenty, plenty of opportunities, and they can't find a way. Uh, so there's some cons- concerns there with the Browns. Like another team that's like not going to have a full – it's hard to trust them to have a full passing performance or running performance, especially at the same time defensively so inconsistent like it's kind of like last year again because at times it's like this is an elite defense and at times it's like ah I don't think so I, it's not even close it's a little weird the Bucks, yeah the Bucks are very beat up and that was going to catch up to them at some point uh was a little surprised to beat the Lions last week while beat up and that was awesome they're 2-0 looking great and they go play one of the worst teams in football right now and they just get completely outplayed both sides of the ball they get completely outplayed kind of times it felt like they kind of can make a push back and they couldn't execute on third down Third downs, uh, the, the, again, they're beat up on defense, especially in the secondary, and, and that's that was a problem in this game. But letting Bo Nix kind of escape sacks, escape pressure, even sometimes not get pressure, just sit back there, you know, McGlinchey hurt. So the Bucks need pass rushers. They're depleting the secondary. They need pass rushers. So is it sinking in on them? Like, were the first two weeks a little fluky on top of them now being kind of hurt? It makes you wonder a little bit, but they get a little of a pass because they're very beat up. But, I mean, Come on now. Playing the Broncos, let Bo Nick show you up. And the Dolphins, and the Dolphins are beat up. You know, no, no, uh, no Tua and Skyler Thompson gets hurt, but it's a bad look because it kind of looks like, is this the Dolphins, which is a, it's a team that's really bad and going to struggle very much to get a win. So they're definitely in the more losers column because of that. Just not a good look for them unless Tua comes back pretty, pretty you know, as soon as he possibly can, which I know he's on the short term IR. Um, yeah, again, there was more winners, more losers. Next video will cover everybody. These are the teams that really, really stood out. Of course, there's other teams that impressed and they did good. They got a win. They're moving on to a better record. Uh, but let me know your thoughts. Who is your biggest winners and losers? Uh, get ready for our week four content power rankings and a lot of predictions. So cannot wait for that. Please subscribe, turn notifications on because we have you covered more than anyone else out there. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.